So Karen, you will get Thank the floor. You. Perfect, and thank you very much, Wayne. I'm um, just moving over. I would like to really start with uh, Shiko. Uh, or sh if, if you look at the, the business model that you have, and you're talking about that, one thing I've noticed, specifically speaking to many of the businesses in my community, living in Elgin, Middlesex, London, they were not uh, eligible for many of these business supports that were coming out from the federal government, including the Canadian emergency business, like the business accounts, uh, the wage subsidies. Did you find that or those conversations that you had with some of the uh, women's organizations, have you found the same thing to exist? Yes, uh, it's CEO. Uh, and oh, so thank you, sorry. CEO, CEO. Uh, so, Yes, it, this has been a real challenge. Um, you know, a, a number of our, there's just, I understand it's really hard to be sitting there and go, okay, what, what should the rules be? Uh, and try and make this up that works for everybody. So I appreciate the challenge around this, but um, a lot of our ventures were not eligible. There was this tiny window of, you know, you had your revenue had to go down by X in a certain period of time. And if it did, then you could um, benefit from some of this funding. So that was uh, a major challenge for a lot of them. Some of the businesses that are actually uh, growing, but could be hiring more, couldn't actually uh, get some of uh, the supports that were there. Um, so that was an issue, but the biggest, the bigger issue is really the rent uh, abatements and the challenges wow. around rent uh, that didn't flow through from the federal government uh, intention and desired outcome through to the provinces. And so this is where we're going to see a massive ripple effect. I think we're going to see at least 50% of our small businesses go down and not be able to come back because of that. Unfortunately, I totally agree with you. And, and that's something that it's great to see everybody on the finance committee today. But the one thing I'm hearing is the delivery of that money. How can we get it directly to the tenant? I've heard from many businesses. So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to move over to Megan Walker, of course. Uh, Megan, I know the great the work that you have done. Specifically, I want to look at the COVID-19 response and, and the shelter money that was given out. And uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Uh, Kemeteros, maybe you can answer on this as well. I, I recognize when the money came out, the $50 million that had come out, your, your uh, agency was one of the agencies that did not receive any of the money for shelters, although you had been providing shelter space. Uh, can you provide me a reason why you would not have been eligible and, uh, and share with us some information on, on what you have been dealing with during this pandemic? You have to unmute. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, sorry. Um, it's a great question and I wish I had an answer for you because we've been trying to get this information um, for many months. We are not a shelter. We provide emergency access to women and girls who need long-term counseling support and advocacy. But during COVID, because there was no shelter space and we have a great relationship with our police service in London, we knew that if police were responding to a 911 call and a woman needed to leave right that minute, that officer needed a place to take her. And yeah. so we negotiated in the city of London with various facilities uh, so that women could be taken with their children immediately to a safe place where they could stay until we could find them an alternative space and they received ongoing counseling and support. That is not funded by the government and is not seen as providing shelter space. With respect to sexual assault, uh, of course, uh, we provide many women with services to assist with being sexually assaulted. Uh, we do not have sexual assault in our name, and I don't think the government understands enough about the work that we do um, to understand the relationship between sexual assault uh, and trafficking, for instance, and childhood sexual assault and the women that come to us, and also the overlap between all of the areas of you know, male violence against women by the, by, by the abuser at home sexually assaulting her or her children, being sexually assaulted by a stranger or in a dating situation. Um, so we have no, I have no understanding as to why we re didn't receive any money. Originally, we thought, well, we're sort of standalone. We're probably one of the only agencies that provides the level of advocacy that we do. Um, but then I later found out from Peter's office um, that in their research, they determined that um, at least 600 other agencies yeah. also did not receive the funding. 
And thank you very much for that, because I was speaking to in a sexual assault center out of Vancouver, where 500, another 500 that are within that network also did not receive funding. Uh, Ms. Camateros, mm -hmm. uh, did you, were you able to receive any funding from the federal government for shelters or anything to support you that way? Well, I, I have to say, and I, and I just referred to my colleague, uh, Ms. Walker, okay, this is the confusion that exists uh, currently at the governmental level. You see, we have a network of services that includes two centers and a shelter. Our shelter got the emergency funding our centers did not so this is this is I, I would say an old question uh, that relates to what kind of services can be effective for victims of violence we deal with different clientels at the shelter we deal with different clientels at the centers and um, both services are extremely necessary and they target different populations for Absolutely. example, the, at the shelters, women in crisis, it's mostly women in crisis. And at the centers, it's women referred mostly from the social services. For example, last year, 71% of our clients at the centers were direct referrals. And this precisely because of the language factors, we have the intervention in many languages. Perfect. So, but that's, that's the issue there. That is the issue there. Okay. And if I can just say, um, although the, the shelter... The, although the shelter, okay. <laughs> did, although the shelter did give the uh, did get the money, um, uh, people should rethink the 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 types of services that are beneficial for women who are victims and wrap around and, and perceive them as integrated. Yes, thank you. Last uh, question, Gary. Oh, wonderful. Great. Human trafficking. I'm going to focus on the human trafficking and then back to Ms. Walker on this. Specifically, we know that the money uh, that we're expecting that was going to be coming rolling out. What do you see as the next steps uh, to make sure that we can make these efforts so that the federal government, I do, I, I do know that all members of parliament in London are listening. I do know that we are all in this because we recognize the great work that you do. But how can we continue to push on your efforts for what you do for human trafficking and for all of the organizations across Canada? How can we get this message to the government that the money needs to come out now? So I appreciate all of the MPs in London who have worked collaboratively towards a solution. Um, and London, we're very grateful because we have a very supportive uh, and generous community that so far has provided us with three months of uh, payment for service to this very marginalized and vulnerable population. Um, I think basically there are people in positions of power that don't understand this issue, that don't understand that it could be any one of these panelists, including the MPs, that could lose a daughter into the horrific world of sex trafficking. Once those daughters are lost uh, and gone, they fly in from all over Canada to London to try to help us, to ask us to help them find their daughters. Can you imagine? They're looking at videos of their daughters on uh advertising sites to determine if their daughters are alive or dead. That's the reality. And what we know is that this is not a single city issue, that the women that come to the London Abuse Women's Centre later go to services in Nova Scotia, they're in Edmonton, they're in Montreal. What we need is to make sure that every single woman in this situation has access to service. There is no wrong door. But right now, the doors are slammed shut by the government. We can't we, even we, get them to find the right door. We will have to end it there. We are very substantially over. Turning to uh, Ms. 